Hello again, minions, it's Wheezy. Today, I wanna to talk about the border crossing map in Modern Warfare 2, and why I actually really like it, even though it gets tons of hate from the Call of Duty community. I'm gonna show you some gameplay, talk to you about ways that you can improve your gameplay on there, and maybe even convert you into thinking it's not as bad as people say it is. So let's go talk about it. Passing the recharge. Reloading. Loading. Changing mag. Reloading. Last mag. Okay, so let's start out by talking about why most people seem to dislike or outright hate the border crossing map. In fact, a lot of people have said that it's one of the worst maps in Call of Duty history, which I don't understand. My initial impression of the map was actually along those lines. I was very like off put by the map. The fact that it's so long, it's not very wide, but it's very, very long, which is very unusual for a map layout in any game, but especially Call of Duty. Um, for me, typically the three lane map design is a, a standard of good gameplay, and that is actually um, largely present in this map, but in an interesting way. But I think the reason that most people hate it is because it's really long, um, it's very narrow, which can feel like you get funneled in because there's so many cars in the main area. Um, it can feel like maybe you're not able to get as predictable lines of sight. It can feel very chaotic. It can feel like there's a lot of directions for enemies to come from, which is true, which is typically a criticism for me in a map, but we'll get to kind of why I like it in a minute. Um, then there's this hallway that's very, very narrow that is absolutely just a completely like murder hallway. Um, and then on the right hand side or left hand side, then on the other side, opposite from the cars, there's a narrower pathway with some cars on it um, that that has that I use as mainly a flanking route, and I think that's what um, it it ought to be mostly used as. And I I think the fact that it's just kind of that non-traditional like layout to where it really kind of funnels people, and the only way you can really have success is by not going straight at the enemy, and you actually have to be able to be tactical and move around. That's why I love it. And I think that's why a lot of people dislike it. Um, if I'm wrong, correct me, tell me what you think in the comments below about why you like it or why you hate it. Um, but I want to talk about why I actually think it's a really great map. And in fact, it's become one of my favorite maps in Modern Warfare 2. And it's because what I like about Call of Duty games, what I like about shooters in general, is the ability to use more tactical gameplay. Where instead of it just feeling like who's got the better like straight up gun skill or who can pick the better meta loadout and then jump around the corner and shoot each other with the fastest TTK weapon. I like a game where you can use a variety of weapons, you can use your strategy, your tactics to outsmart and outplay your opponent. And yes, gun, gun skill comes into an aspect of that, but superior tactics and strategy can outperform gun skill any day of the week if you do it right and I think that's what this game this map specifically really does is it gives players that opportunity if they know what they're doing to to use more of a tactical gameplay and to move and and adapt to the game more strategically um, in a way that a lot of other maps don't really provide so uh, I'm going to be playing some gameplay in the background here, but what I'm also going to do is at the end, when I'm done running my mouth, I'm going to probably tack on a couple more um, gameplay clips where uh, essentially I just have some streaks. That's what I do in general is I capture good gameplay clips where I have longer streaks. And uh, so I went through all my streaks that I've built up from Modern Warfare 2 so far and, and grabbed all the ones that were from Border Crossing. So I'll play some of those so you can see how what I'm about to talk about as far as strategies and tactics you can use on this map, how they apply and how I use them in my gameplay to get a good streak going. Um, and so I'll start out by saying that the main pathway of the map where most people go is actually not where you should spend most of your time. You're definitely going to need to go there 
uh, partially, especially depending on how the other team uses the outside flanking route, as I'll call it. So there's kind of the main road, the hallway, and then the outside flanking route is basically how I'll refer to this. Um, and in the main area where most people bunch up, there's going to be a lot of explosives thrown around. There's limited, the lines of sight are actually um, limited, which is good. So even though it's a very long, straight uh, map, like in that core area, there aren't a lot of really super long lines of sight unless you climb up on top of like vehicles or buses, which is very much a risk reward scenario because it makes you an easier target because people can see you from further away, although it does give you more of a visibility. So in general, I would say use those spots very sparingly. If you're going to be in the main road, you really want to stay lower to the ground and you want to well, stay on the ground and you want to move tactically through the cars instead of trying to find a position where you can just get up and look at people uh, coming towards you, um, which I think is going to get you killed a lot and get you frustrated. I think that's why a lot of people don't like the map. Um, instead of trying to just get a good line of sight and wait for people to come to you, you should use the cars and try to move tactically down the road while using, you know, your senses, using the sound, the mini-map, figuring out where the enemy is going to be, and then using those cars to move tactically from spot to spot, checking those small, shorter lines of sight, listening for footsteps for people who are charging up, and then and then kill them if, when you have an opportunity, and then move to a new location, right? This is not the kind of map where you can pick a spot, sit there, and wait, and have a lot of success, because there's a lot of op opportunities for flanking or different angles. So you actually have to be able to move tactically, keep moving, adjust positions, if you want to have success. Sitting in an area and locking it down isn't going to be very effective on border crossing, which is one of the reasons I really love it. Um, the hallway area is a use it sparingly and avoid it as much as possible situation. I really like the way they have it set up so that the hallway, the entrances to the hallway aren't straight across, so you can't run straight in one side and straight out the other side of the hallway. If you want to use the hallway to cross from the main road to the flanking route, you have to either go into the hallway and go up and out, or go back and out. So there's really an interesting flow with how those hallways are used. And people will like to set up in there behind these trash cans that they have to kind of look down that line of sight and kill anyone that comes in there. So you have to be very careful when you, whether or not there's someone in there before you try to use that. And you also have to be tactical about whether or not you choose to go in and up to get out to the flanking route or in and back. And it'll depend on what the other, t the other team is doing as far as pushing. If the other team is really just stacked up on the main road and they're not really watching that hallway, then you can pretty easily save some time by pushing in and up to the flanking route and then trying to push down the, the flanking outside road um, toward the enemy positions and try and get around behind them. Um, but if they are covering in that area and watching back, then you'll have to, A, you don't necessarily want to challenge someone that's in an established position, so you might have to use the main road to move up to the next spot behind them and try to clear them out, in which case you can then move further back down that hallway and then move out into the flanking route and then move back up. Um, or if you're feeling kind of saucy and you're pretty certain that someone's not going to be jumping into the hallway from further up, then you can continue to push forward. So, so being able to manipulate and control that hallway and knowing how to transition back and forth between the main road and the flanking route is really, I feel like, the core gameplay aspect of this map. And then beyond that, being able to control and use the flanking route is really what makes this a win or lose map, in my opinion. Um, depending on the game mode, um, but the, really the situation is if you can use that flanking route effectively to either get halfway down that main road and get in and attack the enemy or all the way back to the enemy's spawn side and then kind of work in from behind, um, if you can't do that, then it gets to be a bit of a stalemate. And the good thing about the way the map plays right now, which may change over time if more people figure it out, um, is that most people stack up on the main road and there's only usually a couple of people using that flanking route. So you have to be careful because by virtue of it being um, the more the the better route to use, but it's also more difficult because you have to f figure out how to fight your way through the hallway to get to that flanking route. When you encounter people out there, a you need to win those fights because your team's not going to be able to win if you can't control that flank route. And b you're probably the people you're going to run into out there are probably going to be the smarter players because they know that they shouldn't just be running up the main street. So when I 
when you see my streaks and you see my gameplay on this, you're going to see that I will heavily use that flanking route. Um, I'll use the main street sometimes, and depending on the objective or what we need to do, if it's domination and we need that B point by the bus, or if it's hard point and the hard point is in the main street area, then obviously you need to get out there, and that's when you're going to use those cars to control short lines of sight. You're, again, you're not when you're in the main street, you don't want to be exposed to or using long lines of sight unless it's for a very limited amount of time, right? So maybe the enemy, you're not sure exactly where they are, or maybe you guys, are, your team is set up pretty well, and you want to hop up on top of a car or a bus and pick one or two people off real quick and then hop back down. I do that quite a bit, but... I see a lot of people posting up on top of vehicles and like standing on barricades and stuff and looking down the road and those people get shot a lot. They may get one or two or three people and if you're like at the back spawn sniping, you know, you may get a few people before people realize what you're doing. If I get sniped halfway down the road from someone who's in the enemy spawn laying on a bus, you can bet that, well, I'm probably going to be working the flanking route anyway, but you can bet I'm going to prioritize getting into the flanking route there because I know... If I can just get up there, then I've got an, an easy kill from that guy from behind, most likely, because he's just laying up there not knowing what else to do. Alternatively, you could easily take out someone like that by just picking your own sniper. Like I said, because there are these longer lines of sight like that, when someone's in a predictable position and they've killed you from on top of a bus on the other end of the map, there's like 17 places where you could get to to get a, an angle on them and shoot them, and they can't cover all of those. So if you want to do a counter snipe, that can be effective. I'm surprised that up to this point I haven't seen a whole lot of counter sniping like big sniper duels on this map I'm pleasantly surprised I haven't seen that because I think it would be pretty shitty <laughs> to do that and I don't think it would really last all that long just because of the flanking rounds but um, anyway that's how you could kind of deal with that situation but fundamentally what it all comes down to again is using those flanking routes um, knowing how to traverse the hallway and when you do need to fight in the uh, main road that you use the cars as cover try to avoid the longer lines of sight and move tactically and try to control those shorter lines of sight while listening for people moving up towards the objective so um that's what i th that that aspect of that gameplay is what i really love um really briefly there are the spawn sides where there's a couple of like those you know the administrative buildings sometimes the fighting can push in there especially in hard point when they put a hard point in there but in general, that's not a huge part of the map. And that plays, those sections play more closely to the rest of the Call of Duty maps where, um, you know, you have to be able to control a building and stuff like that. I have seen teams that don't that don't know how to play the border crossing map, especially in like deathmatch or kill confirm modes, try and just sit in that building and lock it down, um, which with drill charges and stuff like that in, in Modern Warfare 2, it's not a very effective tactic. But I've seen people try it. And it's just, it just shows, right, the reason why a lot of people don't like border crossing is because a lot of people in Call of Duty, the only way they really know how to have success is to sit back in an area where they can predict where people are coming from and wait for them to come around corners and shoot them. And if you're a good camper, then you'll relocate after you kill two or three people coming from the same spot so that when they come back to revenge kill you, you're not where they expect and you'll kill them again. That's most people's Call of Duty gameplay. So I can understand why they don't like border crossing. Border crossing requires you to move tactically, to play smart, and to be good <laughs> at, at shooter tactics. Um, I think that applies to all of the maps in the game as well. You'll have an advantage, you'll be better um, if you know how to move tactically. But border crossing is one of the few maps that actually kind of requires it, and you won't do well unless you know how to do that. So that's why I really like it. I think that's why a lot of people don't like it. If you feel like you don't like it, and maybe some of that kind of rang true to you, and although maybe it stings a little bit, then check out my Wheezy's War College videos and stick around here, because I'm going to do more videos around strategy and tactics. There's plenty of stuff out there about meta gun builds and meta weapon builds and using fucking, you know, we ranking up your weapons quicker by going to kill confirmed and using fucking decoy grenades. Don't fucking do that, okay? You're going to get like 200 extra experience and you're running the... Sorry. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Other people can give you all those meta weapon builds. I will show you stuff about like the gun builds that I kind of like or that I'm using, um, but but don't expect a whole lot of, here's the current state of the meta from me. Expect more of what I really enjoy about shooters, which is tactics, strategy, you know, playing smart, using a variety of weapons. I like variety in my shooters. I don't like being stuck into the only two or three weapons that work. 
Modern Warfare 2 so far is really great in that there's a shit ton of weapons and all of them are viable in their own way. Some are obviously better and worse than others, um, but I've been having a lot of fun playing with LMGs and shotguns and uh, I've played mostly with a bunch of assault rifles. I haven't even gotten to touch the marksman rifles or sniper rifles yet, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I've not really even touched the SMGs hardly at all. So there's a lot in there, a lot of fun to have, so I'll be coming out with content as much as I can related to those various things. Um, and again, you know, strategy, tactics. I have my Wheezy's War College videos if you haven't seen those. Map movement, strategy, tactics, using your mini map. And I'm going to be doing um, newer versions and updated versions of those as we go. But there's good value there if you want to just get better at shooters in general. objectives. UAV in the area. Counting 
Incoming! Copy. Mortar strike inbound now. Marking coordinates. Copy. Counter UAV. Interference. The enemy took Alpha. We're losing Bravo. Securing Charlie. Securing Alpha. Counter UAV is down. We hold the advantage. Take it off. No effect on target. We control Charlie. Enemies taking bra. Our counter UAV is active. <laughs> Planting Mike. Hostile counter UAV overhead. Counter UAV switching back. Two objectives. Enemy UAV overhead. Taking fire. Flash out. Setting mine. Really? Gunter UAV online. They're blind. Gunter UAV running signal interference. Gunter UAV destroyed. Okay, minions, hopefully you enjoyed that. Maybe it changed your mind a little bit about the border crossing map in Modern Warfare 2. If you liked that video, leave me a like, even if it didn't change your mind. And if you didn't like that video, leave me a dislike. Subscribe if you want more content from me. Uh, I do a lot of stuff with Modern Warfare 2. If 
There's another map that you want to look at that I think is broken that I think a lot of people like so to go the opposite way from this video I made a video on the Al Bagra fortress map, which I think is unbalanced and broken um, So go check that video out if you're interested I'll have a link in the time card in the time card in the end card uh, Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one